Hi, it's API Days Helsinki again, and we have now this mix track with identity management and API management, but hey, it's management after all. And we have Terki Kivinen from Enfo here with me. And would you want to say something about how does this remote life and everything feel? Is it business as usual or have you learned something that you want to share with others? Hello. Uh, I think it's uh, beginning to be business as usual, but of course it's uh, it has made me think about how to appreciate like uh, even the small things in life and, and such like uh, think more positive. Mm. That is a good advice and hey now just take us to the pitfalls. Yeah. Yes, thank you Mariukka. Okay, so <clears throat> my name is Terhe Kivinen and on my behalf I want to say a warm welcome to the API Days Helsinki virtual one this year and 2020. Uh, during these exceptional times, connectivity and ability to collect and transfer information across channels and devices has become more important than ever before. APIs make these things possible and enable offering seamless digital experiences. However, to succeed, APIs should be managed in the right way. Uh, and in my presentation, I'm going to focus on how to avoid pitfalls in API management. Okay, so <clears throat> let's first take a look at the agenda of my speech. I'm going to first tell you a bit about myself and my current employer, Enfo. Then I'm going to introduce you to the subject with discussing the elements of successful API setup and the needs for API management. After that, I will describe API management as a whole and uh, its components and then talk about how to avoid the pitfalls. And then I'm going to do a short summary. Okay, so first, just a bit about me. My current role is a project manager at Enfo. I'm managing integration projects. And uh, yeah, well, during the last five years, I've had different titles. I've been a community manager, integrations lead and partner manager. But uh, during the eight recent years, I think that the focus in my career uh, has always been uh, integrations somehow. And lately, especially API. I work in a financial software company and after that I worked in a bank and now, now at Enfo. Uh, my education is Bachelor of Arts from Humanities and soon to be MBA. <clears throat> so hopefully, hopefully we'll uh, be able to graduate and celebrate this year. I'm living in Espo, which is a southern uh, city in Finland. Okay, then a bit about Enfo. Um, the company's history dates back until 1964, when the company was founded in Kuopio, which is a city located in eastern Finland. Today, it's 56 years later, there are altogether 900 experts who are enabling the customer's data-driven business transformation. Uh, Enfo is a purely Nordic IT service company which is operating both in Finland and in Sweden in 12 offices and supporting around 370 customers in the complex scene of platforms, applications and data. The customer base is ranging from public organizations and local government to private companies with local as well as global reach. A bit about Enfo services. Enfo's areas of expertise range from integrations and cloud management to business intelligence and access management. Uh, the main offered services of Enfo are consultancy and joint projects together with customers and partners. Okay, then a bit of introduction. Yes. <clears throat> uh, 
In a traditional integration delivery setup, the integration tends to be a separate delivery unit. However, working with APIs is not only a technology change, but for the most part, it's a cultural change. Naturally, you need to have in place the technology platform which fits your needs, it's easy to use and future-proof, which means that it can be changed. But you also need to focus strongly on driving the API strategy and mindset and encourage collaboration between people and teams. Therefore, to succeed with the API setup, there's a need for three pillars, process, platform and people. In this presentation, I'm going to focus on two of these pillars, platform and people, and how they can complement each other and help you to avoid the pitfalls in API management. The goal of API management is to facilitate the creation of user-focused apps that support the business needs. Therefore, API management needs to support the four things discovery, modernization, reporting, and monetization. API management solutions are central to managing the relationships between API providers and API users. As such, they are business applications that are critical to digital business success. And if we think about the needs more closely, uh, the discovery part means that by using a developer portal, your APIs will be discoverable and you're facilitating usage by giving the ability, for example, to test the APIs. Uh, another need is to modernize. You need to design APIs that consumers want to consume by using the outside-in approach. It means that we are not only uh, reflecting the information from the background systems, but we are thinking about the customer in, in mind and uh, thinking about the needs of the customer. Of course, you're opening up your backend systems to provide the information as a service. Then on the reporting part, you need to be able to analyze the reports about usage and malfunction to know what works and what doesn't. And of course, to, you gain ability to proactively develop when you, need, when you know how, uh, how consumers are using your APIs. Then you need to be able to monetize, drive revenue from your data and services, both directly and indirectly, and build a foundation for your API economy. Okay, next I'm going to go through the API management as a whole, and after that, look at the different functionalities separately. Uh, in general, if we think about API, man API management, uh, it can be seen to include these four functionalities. As we are aiming for scalable development using the information which is provided by the APIs, first thing to look at is API user portal, which in uh, other words is a developer portal. Here the app developer will uh, find the documentation, but also gain discovery by testing the APIs, be able to register and uh, get support for the implementation when needed. Underneath the user portal here in the picture, you see the API gateway through which the traffic from the application to the API implementation flows. Uh, API gateway, also provides metrics, which is used by the third component here, API product management. Uh, this in turn uh, is the functionality where the actual usage of the APIs is, um, is managed in addition to the developer portal users. Fourth box here is the integrated development environment where the APIs are actually implemented this can also mean, for example, only logic apps or, or something similar, which just sends the HTTP uh, queries to the implementation. Uh, yes, uh, the APIs are implemented in the integrated development environment, and then afterwards they are published via product management and user portal. <clears throat> mm. 
Yes, uh, then the ABI user portal, uh, it's crucial that the relationship between the ABI consumers and ABI providers is managed. API providers must fill four critical tasks, which are providing easy access and understanding on how to use the available APIs, uh, availability, ability to track who's using an API, of course, the communication towards API consumers and enabling user support. API management products provide API user portals with pre-built capabilities for these requi requirements, among other things. Then <clears throat> the API gateway. Uh, in addition to acting as a proxy to implementation and providing the user usage metrics, the API gateway enforces agreements on API use and security. Uh, for example, an API key is often only first element used by a provider to track the API use. API product uh, management products enforce the usage parameters that API pro providers and API users agree upon in different ways. This includes the use of secure sockets uh, uh, like SSL or digital signatures for added security. Uh, for example, also OAuth 2, which allows the pro API providers, customers to authorize access to their data and quotas and rate limits for how many API calls an API user can make. <clears throat> API management solutions usually use an API gateway and in most cases it's uh, embedded in the solution. That is uh, to enforce security and access control. And finally, the API product management functionality, which allows the product managers to optimize the value to the API provider. API management products provide analytical tools to understand how the APIs are used, configuration tools for product managers to directly change access limits and other usage parameters. Uh, it's with the help of the API product management uh, you will be able to monitor API both for use and misuse and thus be able to develop and protect it accordingly. Product management also involves API lifecycle management from the actual introduction until deprecation. Okay, from the last four slides we we learned that API management solutions generally contain necessary functionalities and therefore fulfill uh, the technical needs for API management practices. However, the platform won't solve everything and as we see next, to avoid the pitfalls, we need the other pillar in the picture I showed earlier, uh, which is people, to complement if we want to achieve a successful API setup. Okay, yes. So, <clears throat> uh, how to actually avoid the pitfalls? Uh, if we think about the first bullet point here, it's probably the most hardest thing to do on this list because it's quite often uh, requires changes in company culture and the ways of working. Encouraging collaboration, especially between IT and business, can be really difficult. And uh, one step could be here uh, to move forward uh, uh, with agile development methods, as for example, SAFE, which is Scaled Agile Framework. Of course, it has its own challenges, but it can help, help with uh, collaboration and help the IT and business talk, talk together more. Uh, another bullet point here is prepare yourself for getting feedback and acting based on it. In general, uh, usually you cannot develop something without having at least uh, one of the consumers uh, lined up to use 
use your, con your, your product and giving you feedback. If you manage to develop a great API for the first consumer, it's much more likely that it will continue to be a great for additional consumers. Uh, therefore, you keep in mind to create channels for the user feedback, at least an email address or a web form, and ensure that you have resources processing it. Also, create an API roadmap, uh, most, most preferably one that you can also share with your API consumers, because they will most likely ask it for it at some point. And uh, the next bullet point is related to the previous one about uh, acting based on feedback. Because if you want to offer your API consumers a good experience, you listen to their feedback and keep developing your product. Mm, yeah, about the platform, I mentioned before that the platform won't solve everything, but here I would still like to point out the importance of choosing the platform carefully. When you're choosing the pl platform, it's recommended to act with it uh, as with any other business critical solution. It's good, for example, to do a requirement analysis for the solution and examine the pricing models of the options carefully, as they may be quite complicated sometimes and there most likely are different kind of tires uh, based on SLAs or throughputs ETC. Also, you could uh, consider the, if you have some kind of on-premise or legacy, legacy solutions because they might, uh, they might cause some kind of challenges with the API platform. It's also recommended to look at, for example, Gartner's reports. They, they usually have quite good uh, comparisons about the platforms. Okay. <clears throat> yes, well then, uh, API products. First of all, you should treat your uh, APIs as products. API management solutions generally enable creating the products, but their planning and designing is of course done by people. Uh, if you're creating an API for external use, you can, for example, collaborate with marketing or sales team and do even a market research uh, to find out the potential API consumers' uh, needs, what kind of APIs they would really want to use and, and need. Um, then the security and performance. API management platforms, again, include the fine functionalities, basic functionalities, but they are not uh, universal solutions. Um, it's, uh, it's recommended to take into account security practices regarding data filtering, rate limiting, authentication and authorization. Uh, one thing, of course, is to ensure the support resources. Uh, developer portal helps developers to find support, but you need to have the people who are supporting you, your API consumers. One option could be if you have your own customer support for your own so solution or application already in place, you could try to uh, give them the API support also, but uh, keep in mind that it, it requires quite a lot of training or uh, at least your developers should be as a second, uh, second line support. And that uh, in turn requires their time and takes it away from actual development work. And final bullet point here is that don't try to do everything yourself. Uh, it's uh, quite a big effort to um, start an API project and uh, try to manage API, uh, APIs. It really requires a lot of resources and it might be that it's, it's too hard to handle. So one option is to outsource either API management or API development or both of them.
okay, I've ended up at the summary already. And um, as I mentioned in the beginning of my presentation, working with APIs is not uh, only a technology change, but for the most part, it's a cultural change. You'll have to change the general mindset in the organization to support the ABI initiative. This can be done more easily if uh, you have a strong business case for the APIs. Then you need to incentivize, for example, by rewarding the right behavior that meets the company objectives. You will also have to invest in the right systems, ensure visibility and automation, and measure what works or what does not, uh, iterate and change until it fits what you want to achieve. When design, designing, uh, always keep the customer in mind and think about concrete use cases because they will help you, help you in your way. Okay, thank you. Uh, that was that was all from me. I'm very happy to be able to share my share my thoughts and uh, be safe and and healthy and. See you. Thank you, Terhi. And I have to ask because I know that you have some actual real life kind of experience <laughs> from from living this life in in the organization that provides the APIs. So, is this really how it's going to happen, or like speaking from experience? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think th this is a lot of like coming from my own experiences mm -hmm. uh, and these are like uh, things that if you really keep these in mind, then, then you might <laughs> succeed. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's really difficult, I must say. I've seen it myself that it's a long road, but, but of course the most important thing is probably the collaboration between people and yeah. and uh, of course the business case and if you have like real numbers already you can show show that this is how we can uh, this is what we can achieve and, and so on so that helps a lot yeah i think that that's kind of the uh, interesting thing for some it folks out there to understand that the problem is not the technology or the APIs, but the problem is really the human beings and, and, and the most common thing is like, if we only could get the business to understand, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but thinking about these steps and making it really clear that you showed here, so that should really help. Hey, thank you, Terhi, it was a real pleasure to have you here and see you in June. Bye. Yes, thank you. Bye.